You're watching Ramping Up Your English on RVTV Voices. I'm your host, John Letts, and we're not quite finished with bears. We're beginning the process of researching and reporting on an animal, and our bears are going to help us do just that. Here are the topics that will guide us when doing our research. Think of them as questions to be answered about the animal being researched. We'll need a physical description, the animal's classification, its distribution, and its habitat needs. Its diet, life cycle, and reproduction, physical adaptations, and behavior adaptations. Comparison to a similar animal, and the animal's conservation status. We'll also add interesting facts. Now this is our primary source. It's a wildlife card published by International Masters Publishers. They sell these wildlife explorer cards by subscription. This is the cover of their card on the American black bear. Let's see what we can find out about the bear on the cover. First of all, there's a picture of the animal. This is part of what you'll need for a description. It's a perfect source for a description since it's up to you to find the right words to describe it. Let's look carefully at the first item on our research list. The description would include the animal's general shape, its size, color, features, statistics, and its comparison to a similar animal. We've done this already with black bears and with deer in previous episodes. The statistics are found on the back of the card. As for the distribution, we mean where on earth this animal is found. The range of the animal is often begun with one location and ended with another. An example of this would be that black bears range from the east coast of Canada to the west coast. The black bear's distribution is also on a map and described with words. Those words, those word descriptions, will set a pattern of how we report on this work. This is where we'll take notes, not copying the wording from the wildlife card onto your report. On the card, it says, over much of North America, uh, the range extends north to Alaska and the Canadian tundra and south into northern Mexico. The writer has made a fine sentence about this distribution of black bears. Now it's your turn to use your own words. So you write notes of the basic material. Most of North America makes a good note. Alaska would be another one. Northern Mexico is also important. Now we're ready to use our own words to lay out its distribution. Now since we're writing about the animal's distribution, you could start with black bears are located and then look at your notes. Also look at the map. The red shading showed the range of the black bear. You could add in many parts of the United States, but not in the middle states. Since they're not limited to the United States, you'd want to add they're also found across most of Canada. They range south into the northern states of Mexico. This way, you've communicated about the range of black bears without using the wording on the wildlife card, the one of the writer. There's more benefit in doing this even if you make mistakes in writing your own version than in copying the writer's words. You'll stretch your skills that way. As I used to tell students who copied word for word from a source, tell me who the writer is so I can give them an A. So let's do the same with a grizzly bear. Its picture is also on the front of a wildlife card. And since this picture is mostly of its mouth, find the sketch on the back of the card. This can give you more clues to its description. The statistics are right on the side, as you can see. For its distribution, look again at the front of the card. In the right-hand corner is a map and some words. Again, you'll want to read about the range and take notes. The card says, found in western North America in national parks and mountainous, in mountains. Large populations only in Alaska and western Canada. Hunting since pioneer days reduced numbers dramatically. Now, you want to note western North America 
national parks, and mountains at Alaska and Western Canada. I've enlarged the words that you would write down as notes. Now, look again at the map down in the corner. Do you see how different this is from the one of black bears? The red shaded part starts at the Rocky Mountains in the United States and ranges up to Alaska, covering some provinces in Canada on the way to Alaska. So now write down your own section on the distribution using your own words to piece together your notes. Here's an example. It could be grizzly bears range from the Rocky Mountain region of the United States north through the western provinces of Canada through Alaska, where they are found throughout the state. Now, your section on the distribution won't be exactly like mine. Find a different way of piecing the notes together. Again, it's more valuable to do that making some mistakes than to just copy the perfect stuff from the wildlife cards. Um, so let's look at a much smaller uh, North American animal. This is a, a much smaller mammal, in fact, in North America. So let's look at this. These mammals are also an interesting range distribution. Otters are known as animals that like to have fun. River otters are found near water. They have a number of adaptations that help them thrive in habitats that are wet. They love to eat fish, but they also have been observed playing. As we end segment one of episode 50, let's begin segment two by watching this video clip to learn more about otters. This is a river otter. River otters are known above all for their playfulness. This river otter has no time for play right now. There's food available, and that's no game. River otters were once found across North America, but humans have not been their friends, although otters don't seem to mind people being in their space. So now most of the eastern and midwestern rivers are without this fun-loving mammal. They still live in the American West and are numerous in the Pacific Northwest, including Oregon. This river otter has a name, Nestle. It lives at Wildlife Images, a wildlife rehabilitation and education center in Josephine County, Oregon. This may sound strange, but Nestle is a retired movie actor enjoying his retirement here. Providing the right food for Nestle is vital to his well-being. That task is shared with children here during a summer camp. This is the day of greatest excitement for these summer campers. This is the day when they prepare the food for three kinds of animals at Wildlife Images, including Nestle, the river otter, The camp teacher and several volunteers lead the kids to their favorite activity. They approach a tent that today is designated the Critter Kitchen. And what are you guys making diets for? Uh, so Nestle, our river otter, so you guys are going to be making diets with what? Fish. With fish. So you're going to be the smelly table. Okay. The teacher explains to campers that the food will be carefully placed using objects collectively known as enrichment, ways to make the otter seek out and use its wits to free its food for eating. Now they get down to the business of preparing the food. So we have to do the next. Okay, so that's 83. So what if we cut this in half? We're going to wait until they hit. Yeah, sure. And then our friends are going to go. So, you know, we need to get a sample. 
And remember, there's like seven yeah. fingers. Yeah. So, yeah. Fingers. so, so we have eight. So, do we feel the skin? Nope. So Excuse me. There's no chicken in there. there. No chicken? Okay. Oh, maybe put the second one on there. Two hundred. Okay. Um, does somebody yeah. else yeah. want to cut this? Okay. I'll cut it. She wants. Let her cut it, and then you can so cut it. You you can, we're still going to have to cut these. Yeah. So. I'll cut some yeah. No, wait. Oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah. Here, Casey. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 This critter kitchen was definitely an example of hands-on learning. There, I yeah, it's Here, do you want me to pull? tear it now? Uh, they're old uh, old old. Old. I got it. They're so put, put, put your um, I think the way to do it is like, like very cool. Cool. Yeah, um, like, And then you, you can cut like I this piece. I like salmon Okay, so all we're missing right now is the half a tab of B vitamins. So, vitamin B. Venison. Um, so she doesn't need all of these things. She just needs 350 grams of meat. And so, we have two different types of meat. Yeah, no, don't. Just leave the skin on. We will. It's fine. Um, so don't peel it off. Are we doing, are we doing enrichment now, too? Are we going to put some? Campers from all three groups leave the tent. They stop first to feed coatis, then they head to the otter habitat. Some of the prepared food is thrown into the enclosure by the campers. Nestle frantically seeks out and eats the food. She finds food in an enrichment. I don't know. Uh, what you put about pieces of meat in there? Oh, so she's going to get it out one way or another. She might just stick her paws in there and try and grab it too. No, she knows. She's huh? putting it to that the big hole. Yeah. Out of the yeah. Oh, she got some more. She's trying to get it into her mouth. Yeah, we want to see her get the stuff out of the enrichment. See how her brain works. Huh? No one brings food to these river otters. This den is located in the San Juan Islands, surrounded by the Salish Sea. While not a river, this body of water provides a rich habitat where food is abundant. And although it's a sea, these are not sea otters, they're river otters, a different species. This rocky den comprises a mother and her pups. Now, river otter litter consists of usually from two to five pups. This one appears even larger. Let's watch the almost grown pups in this den. River otters often make their den in abandoned homes of other animals, especially beavers. This rocky den provides ample protection. I think one of them is peeing. One went in, a bunch of them are going in. A river otter's body is designed for swimming. Its streamlined head, shorter forepaws, and its long tapered muscular tail make the otter a strong, swift swimmer. Their longer hind legs and webbed feet make for less than graceful land movement, 
but serve them well in the water. Watch what happens when this otter spots the splashing of a fish. A river otter's teeth are sharply pointed to grab and hold on to fish, and apparently to take it away from another otter. Back in the water for one, while the other munches down on the fish it got from its brother. Still enjoying its morning snack, the otter goes back where it's most at ease in the water. Hopefully more scenes like this will play out in our natural environment.